when is the best time to post on social media? Or when is the best time to launch your services or your program or your product? When's the best timing? So that's a question that I get a lot from people. And here's my answer to that. If you are asking about timing, I want to first know what is your rhythm and are you following it? Let me explain. There is a fantasy that if you get the right timing, something can really take off. And if you don't get the right timing, it's going to tank. Okay, you, you probably have, maybe you have that fear as well. I'm not sure. But let me tell you, it is a myth. It is a myth. If a piece of content is resonant with your audience, you can post it at 2 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m., it doesn't matter, at the worst time possible, and it will still go viral in the next few days. If you have an okay piece of content that doesn't resonate with your audience and you post it at the ideal time of day to post on social media, by the, which by the way, just Google it. Go ahead, you can do that right now. Google ideal time to post on social media and you're gonna get the answers. And guess what? It's not gonna work for you, <laughs> right? Because it's all about the content. This is a myth, it's a myth. Let's stop thinking about timing, forget the timing. And, and so there's a fantasy that people don't. So, so when I hear people asking about timing, here's what I realize. Oh, they don't have that much experience posting on social media. Uh, that may be one. They don't have much experience posting, so they don't realize that it's about the quality of the, it's about the resonance of the content with the audience. It doesn't matter what time they post it. And number two, they might be using it as an excuse to delay because, Oh, if George tells me, then I have next Tuesday at 9 a.m. is the perfect time. Oh, good. Now I can wait until next Tuesday at 9 a.m. I don't have to post it right now because I'm scared of the rejection or scared of the silence, scared that I look foolish. And if you've heard me, if you watch my other videos, you know, and I'm going to make another video on this. Like, why are we so scared? What is there to be scared about? Honestly, I think that that's actually a really important one. I'm going to do a separate video on that because that's what's holding most of you back is fear. That's it. And if you can overcome the fear with whatever, anyway, a separate, separate video. Let's talk about timing. Now, am I saying that timing doesn't matter at all? I, I might sound like I am, but let me clarify. Timing is an amplifier of quality. Timing is not a savior. So what I mean is if a content is, is good for the audience, doesn't matter what time you post it, it's still going to be great. You're going to find great results. And yes, if you find great results with something, just reshare it again at the ideal, supposed ideal time for social media content. Okay. And by the way, if you, every audience is different, slightly different at least. So go into your Facebook page, click on insights, and then click on posts, and you will see the ideal time for your audience, what, when you should be posting on social media should. Take that with a grain of salt. Post your content at 3 a.m., 2 a.m., doesn't matter when, and if it is above average in response after a couple days, reshare it at the ideal time. That's how you create, that's how you think about timing, not I'm gonna wait until I'm feeling better. So, uh, you know, oh, the timing, yes, I'll use that as an excuse, right? Okay, so that's, that's, uh, that's one. In terms of programs, I have launched programs on December 27th, when everybody is on vacation, I launched a program and it did pretty well. I've also launched my best program ever. I thought it was my best program ever on like October 1st, like it was like prime time of the whole year. And on you know February 1st or January 15th, prime times, I've launched what I thought was the best program. Nobody bought it. Nobody bought it. It's not timing. It's, the, it's how the program resonates with the audience. Same thing with content. So stop waiting to launch. Ah, that right timing. Everyone's on vacation in August. Not supposed to launch in August. I launched two things this month. August. Okay? So it's, I, don't care, and, and I don't care about timing because I know, because I have the experience to know. 
that it's not a timing. Timing is just an excuse. And we have to be so careful about the excuses we make about, oh, I'm not ready yet. I'm not, it's not perfect enough. Forget all that. Launch as soon as possible. Launch right now. Stop watching the video and go and launch your thing right now. It's better for you than if you wait because you will learn by launching. That's the only way to learn. Taking my courses, helpful, gives you some ideas, but you can't really learn until you launch. You can't because you don't really know what your audience is going to tell you until you offer it to them humbly to say, will you buy? And they may not buy. And if they may not buy. You give yourself three hours to be depressed, go eat some ice cream if you need to, and then jump back up and say, okay, great. Let me offer you something else humbly. Will you buy? Oh, not going to buy? Okay, great. I was um, just listening to Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, his, his newest book, uh, crushing it. By the way, a lot of you probably won't like him, but I, I think he has a heart of gold and I do get some things from him that I think is valuable. And he said something that's really true. He said, I would rather see you launch 10 times and, and, and only succeed three times than to see you launch only three times and have all three times succeed. Because if you think that every launch needs to be successful, You've already lost because you're not going to launch enough times to really learn about your audience and your market and really learn about what you really want to do. How do you, when someone says, George, I can't figure out what I want to do. I said, do everything. Do it all. Do it all. Everything you want to do, do it all. Of course, you have to schedule then. You have to <laughs> maybe do it in sequence and figure out what the timing, not the timing, rhythm is for your, for your, for your launches. Launch it all. Do it all. Because only then will you know what you truly love to do and what your audience truly want, what the world truly wants from you. Your calling is where your deep gladness meets the world's deep needs. Your calling is where your deep gladness meets the world's deep needs. That's a quote from Frederick Buchner, not from me. But that's the intersection. And how do you know? You've got the, your deep gladness. You have 12 things you have deep gladness for. Great. Do all 12 and see which of the 12 meet the world's deep needs. Because you may, be think, you may think you're brilliant talking about this or that, and the world doesn't think you're brilliant about it. And you may think that you're stupid talking about this, and the world thinks you're amazing. It happens all the time to me and to everybody else I know. You don't know until you launch. So instead of timing, let's talk about rhythm. That is much more important. Okay. So for my programs, my products, and my services, I have a rhythm of launch of once a month. Some of you are like, what? I launch three times a year and I'm exhausted. Or I launch once a year and I'm exhausted. Well, it's because you exhaust yourself with launches. My launches are so minimal. Two emails, a Facebook event. That's, that's new for me. I didn't used to do Facebook. I was too lazy to do it. But now I'm doing two emails, a Facebook event, and two Facebook postings that I run ads on. Sorry, I ran out of fingers here. <laughs> two emails, a Facebook event, and two Facebook postings that I run ads on to my warm audience. That's my entire launch strategy. I just gave it to you. I just gave it to you. It's my entire launch plan. Use it. That's it. Minimal. Two emails to my list, okay? People who want to hear about my launches. A Facebook event. I actually buy an ad for my Facebook event for the warm audience. And then two posts that I buy ads for to my warm audience, so three, three Facebook ads, okay? So I, I launch every single month. I have a new thing, as you notice. I have something for you to buy, humbly, please. Will you buy this? You know, Every single month, I, I, I hand it to you to see if you'll buy it or not, and you don't have to buy it, because your, your purchase or not is a vote. It's very helpful for me to know what the market is saying. You are my market, so only vote for the things that you want. Don't, don't buy the things you don't want. Only buy the things you want. And then I'll know, oh, thank you. 30 of you bought this. Okay, good. 70 of you bought that. Oh, okay, I better do more marketing on that thing for 70 next time, you know, the thing that sold 70 of them. You have to vote. Oh, only three people bought this. Great. Thank you for saving me from having to launch that again. You know, so you, you're, you know, your market is voting. You have to give them a chance to vote. You give them a chance to vote, right, more often so that you can tally the votes and go, oh, nobody wants that. Great. You just saved, saved me some time, right? Oh, you like this one, right? Et cetera, et cetera. So rhythm. What is your rhythm? I want to ask you that right now. Comment below if you want to. What is your rhythm of launches? If you're only launching once a year, you're exhausting yourself because you think you're giving yourself 
so much pressure. I give myself so little pressure on everything. Everything's so little pressure. This video, no big deal. If this thing bombs, I make another one on Friday. No big deal. I make another one next Tuesday. I make another one. I just keep making them. I no big deal. I of course I was nervous before I clicked on go live. Of course. Who isn't nervous to go live in front of the world? Everybody's nervous. But we those of us who do it click it anyway. And then countdown three, two, one. All right, here I am. I gotta talk now. That's how I do it. Gotta talk. <laughs> They're watching. Gotta say something, right? So my rhythm of content is, as you probably know, if you watch my stuff, a new video every Tuesday and Friday. On Mondays, I have some kind of community-based post to say, hey, let's all get to know each other in this Facebook page. Some of you are watching this on YouTube, I understand, so you don't get the benefit of some of the things on my Facebook business page. But Mondays, Facebook business page, hey, community, let's get to know each other, post your offerings, share your blog post. Share about somebody else you really like, you know, that kind of Mondays, that's that. Tuesday is a new video um, and blog post uh, you know, on Medium. Uh, Wednesday is uh, a blog post on my own website, something that's a stage two content, meaning I take something that worked really well last month, and then I will re-edit it and post on my website, and I share it on Facebook as well. Uh, Thursday is some kind of offering, like, hey, my upcoming course. Or it's a text-based posting of one of my blog posts. So Thursday is kind of flexible. Friday is a new uh, video. And Fridays now, I'm gonna, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to be reading a chapter of one of my books. If you don't have a book yet, just read one of your old blog posts, right, uh, on, on video, and, and give, I'm going to give commentary on it. So that's starting, starting this Friday. I'm, I'm going to do that. And then uh, Saturday is one of my um, – uh, I interview one of my clients during the week, and I schedule it to go out on Saturdays. And Sunday is where I'm interviewed on some other podcast and I promote that or um, I promote one of my upcoming offerings. So Sunday is kind of a flexible promotion day. So I have something going out every day. Of course, I only work Monday through Fridays. So I, the Saturday and Sunday ones, I schedule them to go out on, on those days. So that's my rhythm of content right now. And it has changed uh, uh, since uh, I've made this new rhythm about a month and a half ago, I think, on, in July. And um, so your rhythm can change, but you've got to have a rhythm and stick to it because quantity leads to quality. Quantity leads to quality, okay? Rhythm and staying with your rhythm leads to skill, your, the growth of your skills in communication and in launching as well as your understanding of your audience. That's the only way to understand your audience, not by, well, I, I think they like this. No, no, you don't think they like something. You share it with them and see if they like something. So I am agnostic about my content. I don't know if this is gonna do well or not. I, I don't know. Oh, we'll see. You don't have to like it, and if you don't, then I know not to talk about this in the future, right? So, so that's all I know is I just put it out there and see what you think. And I'm just, I stay very unjudgmental towards myself. No judgment towards myself. And whatever you judge is not me. It's just the content or the offering. And that's a, that's a really key distinction that some of you need to, need to really get clear in your mind is your content and your products and services, it's not, it's not you that they're judging. It's the content that they're judging or it's the product and service they're judging, not you. Um, you are of infinite worth. You are, you are completely, utterly valuable. There is no, no, you can't put a price on who you are and how great you can be and are, you know. And the infinite uh, well of creativity within you uh, is, is absolute fact, in my opinion. So uh, you're just letting your audience vote on content or offerings. Okay. So anyway, forget timing. Don't, when you start to say, well, what's the right timing for this? Ooh, it's the fantasy that timing matters that much. It doesn't really that matter that much. Remember, timing can be done in the second round. You put it, everything out there the first time. You're writing in at 3 a.m., put it out there at 3 a.m. The timing matters in the second round. When you reshare it, fine, look at the timing. When you reshare it, if it went well the first time, it doesn't matter. Stage one content, share anytime, anytime, okay? doesn't matter the day doesn't matter the hour. When you are experienced in social media, you realize that. 
Okay, something that's going to do well will do well. Okay, trust me. In in a few days, people see it when they wake up. Oh, they posted at three a.m. Okay, now I'm seeing it now. Oh, they come home from work. Now I'm seeing it now. Okay, that's what that's how it works, right? So, um, okay, so timing doesn't matter as much as you think, and also, secondly, don't use it as, as an excuse uh, to delay. You need to get things out there, quantity and speed. Speed and quantity are more important for the development of your skills and of your audience than you think. Speed and quantity matter a hundred times more than quality in terms of your own thinking and your own action. Because if you start thinking, oh, it's not good enough yet to put it out there. I'm not good enough yet. I'm at a, you've already lost. Stop losing. Okay. Sorry, I don't use I, I've been listening to Gary Vaynerchuk, so I'm using the, that language. So I apologize. Um, you've already, you're blocking, you're stopping yourself. You, you're, you're getting your own way. Don't think about quality. Don't think about getting it right. Don't think about, is this good enough? Put that all vocabulary, get rid of it. Only think quantity and speed. Am I being fast enough to publish? Am I, am I putting it out there fast enough? Am I putting out enough of it? Because then you don't, you, you then release the pressure. With quantity comes a lot less pressure on everything. And that's what I want to, you to become, very casual, just no pressure, put it out there. If the idea is good, it's going to do well. It doesn't matter how you look, how you sound, how you communicate, the stumbles, the stumbles in your writing, bad grammar, doesn't matter. It's the topic and the ideas that matter, okay? And the same thing with your product and services. If it's, it's not how great your copywriting is, it's well designed, it's well, no, 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 no timing, no, no, no. It's, is the thing is the promise, is the, is the solu solution to the problem what your audience is looking for? That's it. It's not how great it's written out and the design. Blah, blah. That's all, and again, those are amplifiers. Those will help you to do even better when you reshare it. But the first time you share something, share it raw. Share it raw, okay? This, my Tuesday and Friday videos are raw because when I redo it in the future, it's going to be my, me reading a chapter to you and making commentary on it because it's been edited and all that stuff, right? So, okay, I'm going to um, stop my uh, raw here, and I will uh, go ahead and address some of the comments that are coming through. So thank you to uh, those who are joining me live here, Captain, Alejandra, uh, Arturo, uh, Lisa, Susan, Lindsay, David, Brandy, Karen. Sharon, thank you for, for joining me here. Um, Sharon just said, love the reminder about speed. Consistency is king. Absolutely, speed. You've got to do it. Rhythm. I mean, and by the way, for some of you, speed might mean I've only been doing it once a month, and now I'm going to do it once a week. Okay, so speed doesn't mean what Gary Vaynerchuk says is, are you posting 20 to 30 pieces of content a day? I think he's kind of ridiculous in that way, right? I mean, he, I love the guy but he's kind of extreme in certain things. He's 20, he's, he's, he says 20 to 30 pieces of content a day. I mean, I'm doing one a day, right? Like that's, that's my speed. Um, your speed might be once a week right now, but I would say less than once a week, you should really, really try to get once a week as the minimum speed and then try to do twice a week if you can. And then, you know, twice a week is a nice kind of average speed in terms of new content. And then three, four, five times a week, because it'd be great if you can, right? So, um, so yeah, Alejandra says, maybe what I need to do is set a regular posting days instead of doing seven to 10 days in a row of Facebook video uploads. Yeah, yes, I agree. This is why I'm a little bit concerned for people who are doing those 30-day video challenges or seven-day, 100-day, 100 video challenges or something. Yeah, I mean, it, it might help you to kind of break, break a block that you've been having. But a lot of times what happens is after the 30 days, they stop. And then they're like, oh, I'm exhausted, right? See, that's the problem. A lot of you, are, you're exhausting yourselves because you're like, you're, like, you're like running sprints. Like you're like, you run a sprint and then you rest for like a month or two. And you try to run another sprint. And it's like, so stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. I want you to find a rhythm. Your heartbeat is the right metaphor, okay? Your heart doesn't say, Hey, I, I'm really excited to start beating again. Let me beat, beat, beat really, really fast. Oh, wait, let me stop beating now. I'm so exhausted. You'll die, right? The rhythm of your content and the rhythm of your offerings is the heartbeat of your business. Tweet that out. 
quote that out. I don't care if you say it, you said it. I don't care who says it. Okay. I'm sure someone else has said it before. The rhythm of your content and your offerings is the heartbeat of your business. If you're doing sprints and then long periods of rest, you're, you're, you're making everything too serious because when you're resting so long, you're going to be like, Oh my God, starting again. Like it gives you so much pressure. But when it's something that just happens all the time, there's no pressure. There's no, there's no intensity. It's just something you do. It's just something you do. And it's just, you then notice what the results are and you just get better at it over time. That's it. Right? So, um, yeah, Brandy says, yes, this is great. If it bombs, so what? Make another one on Friday. It's true. It's true. And I bomb all the time, you know, and my bomb is different from your bomb, right? So my bomb could be, wow, only 10 people liked it. I usually get 30 to 40 likes on something that really bombed for you. It may be nobody liked it after a week. Okay. For you, something good could be, wow, one person liked it today, right? When you're first starting out, that's oh wow, great. So it's different for everybody, but you you just have to objectively, without judgment, because you're 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 too busy to judge yourself. You're you're just on to your next thing. And then occasionally you you occasionally you analyze rather than judge. Once a week or once a month, you analyze your, your content and go, oh, that one only got one. Well, how come this one got four likes? Well, that's interesting. That's four times as many as I usually get. Right? So just look at your averages and go, oh, what's what's good? So um, okay. Uh, so Alhendra says, creating a time for our audience to expect us to post that could be useful too, right? Okay. That's a good question. So let me say it this way. It's not about from your standpoint, don't worry about the audience's expectations. Only focus on what rhythm works for you. If you end up, if you're a night owl and you always do Facebook live at 1 a.m. in the morning, your time, fine, do it. Maybe your audience only watches at 9 a.m. and they will always watch at 9 a.m. It doesn't matter. And maybe you end up start building an audience who watch at 1 a.m. And fine, that means, hey, maybe you get to coach people at 1 a.m. Because you're a night owl, you're up all night. You might as well coach people at 3 a.m. And there are people around the world who would love to coach with you at 3 a.m. And maybe some of your night owls around, around your location. You know, so you don't think about the audience's expectations. Think about your own rhythm and stick with it. That's it. Let the audience catch up to you rather than you say, well, audience says 9 a.m. Then I should. No, no, no. You do you. The audience will catch up. Lisa says, I was about to bake cakes. You rescued me. <laughs> bake cakes, the metaphor being, oh, it's still baking. I'm still baking, still baking. Yeah, maybe you burned it, right? <laughs> so just, just uh, uh, let it be casual. Let it be raw right now. This is, you know, cookie dough. That's what you're serving right now. And let people see if people like the cookie dough. If they like the cookie dough, then you bake it, right? Stage two content is you then bake the cookie dough, right? Do you like cinnamon cookies? Do you like chocolate chip? Do you like, you know, this or that? Well, Here's the cookie dough. And oh, I really like chocolate chip. Okay, great. I'm gonna I'm gonna bake it now. Right? Second second stage. So uh, let's see. There's any other? Um, all right. So uh, Sharon says it's like walking. You just keep putting one foot in front of the other. When you're moving, you can always change direction. Exactly. If you're if you're sitting still, you've got no choice. Yeah, brilliant. Exactly. And that's what um, I think Einstein had a quote. Right. Life is about uh, oh, to achieve balance in life, you have to keep moving. Achieve balance in life. I think maybe that's not exactly what we're talking about here, but but uh, yeah, keep moving, keep moving. Then you can change direction exactly. Um, yeah, Gudrun says Facebook likes me. People start to find me. Wonderful. Keep going, keep going. Captain says now I understand why you wrote the article about beginner blogger overall. No pressure, yet consistent, always showing up. Yes, and Banu, great to see you here. Thanks for joining. Um, that's it. Anyway, so enough, enough watching time for you to go and do your next thing, put your next posting up, uh, launch, you know, per, you know, work on the launch of your next thing. Remember less pressure, more, more offering, humble offering raw, see if they like it. If it's going to work, raw is going to work and then you can bake it and it'll work even better. 
But if it's something's not going to work, no matter how much you bake it, it's still not going to work. So it's really about even the raw works. Okay. So all right, wishing you well. Remember, uh, it's you. You have infinite well of creativity within you, and you just have to start start going in in there and digging, digging it out, digging it out. The more you you use that well of creativity, the more you realize you are powerful and amazing and infinite. So be well. I'll see you Friday.